just to have a quick review of uh, where at the moment. Um, I'm going to be presenting um, four studies today, so I'm going to be moving through them quite quickly, and I'm going to focus more on the findings than the specific results. So if you have a question about how we measured something or the exact differences in means, uh, you can ask at the end, or maybe if it's a really detailed question, just come and grab me at any point in the conference. So this is work funded by uh, Cancer Research UK, conducted at uh, London South Bank University, in particular the Centre for Addictive Behaviours Research. Uh, and um, we're interested really in how attitudes towards e-cigarettes uh, and tobacco interact with the experience of viewing these ads. So the rationale is we know that e-cigarettes uh, represent a lower harm nicotine delivery system, but we also know, and this is the case both in the UK and, and, and globally, that perceptions of e-cigarettes are not necessarily as positive and the understanding of the health benefits, uh, the, the comparative risk at least, is maybe not so strong. Um, although the evidence is strongly suggesting um, that there's, there's not the problem that we maybe feared around renormalization of tobacco, product, uh, tobacco products a few years ago, um, those still concerns still linger, and it's important we look to see how people viewing e-cigarette adverts then think about tobacco. And finally, there's no evidence that uh, speaks to how e-cigarette adverts change people's attitudes, uh, sorry, people's e-cigarette attitudes change their response to message around stop smokers, and that stop smoking. And that's particularly important for people who are dual using. They're in that transition between full smoking and either fully e-cigarette or possibly abstinence. So the key questions we're asking are what are the effects of viewing e-cigarette ads and ASMs on attitudes firstly, and secondly, what are the effects of e-cig attitudes on ASMs? And we're particularly interested in exploring that among smokers, non-smokers, um, e-cigarette users, but particularly dual users. So in our first study, uh, we did two pilot studies to begin with, uh, and the first of these were essentially they were to identify effective adverts which we used in our main laboratory sequence. Uh, and in, this in the pilot studies, in both cases, we presented participants with one of 15 different adverts. And in, in the first study, they were uh, uh, e-cigarette adverts, and the second one, they were anti-smoking messages. And in both cases, we took pre and post methods of how healthy the products were perceived, how socially desirable, and how, or, sorry, how desirable in general, and how socially acceptable they're also seen. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, we're not going to talk too much about the results. That's more for the moving on to the main study. We looked at how persuasive they were seen as being. So in our first study, we've got a decent sized sample, nearly 1,000 participants uh, took part to begin with, and they were a mixture of smokers, non-smokers, vapors, and dual users. And after we filtered out, so Crowdflower is, um, it's now called something else called Figure 8 now, I think, it's, um, it's a bit of an analog to something called uh, MTurk, so it's an online platform where people can do questions quite quickly. Uh, and after we filtered out people who clearly weren't paying attention because they got questions like what does 2 plus 2 equal wrong and things that suggest they're doing it automatically, we ended up with a sample of 770 people and a nice age mix between 18 and 65 and around half of them are female. So what we found, just to give you the headline results, you can see that on the whole, um, in terms of how healthy um, e-cigarettes were seen, this is post viewing the ad, um, they were seen as more healthy by smokers, non-smokers, and dual users, which is uh, good news. However, we saw no change in vapors, and presuming that's because at this point vapors had bought into that idea. They were maybe more aware that they were um, healthy uh, than other people. In terms of um, social acceptability, we didn't see much action. What we did see, though, is actually non-smokers perceived e-cigarettes as being less socially acceptable post seeing the advert. And that could have been a function of some of the ads that we saw. If you remember the early phase of e-cigarette ads, uh, some of them were quite um, bawdy and had some sort of sexually explicit content and um, were, some of them were just downright misogynist, to be honest with you. Um, and I think that, that probably changed as that the advertising matured a little bit, but that could explain that finding. And then finally, in terms of how desirable the products were, we saw an increase amongst non-smokers and also amongst dual users. So that's the pattern of results we found around e-cigarettes. We did the same thing looking at tobacco ad, uh, attitudes, and here what we saw that when people saw those um, e-cigarette ads, actually for the health benefits there was very little increase with the exception of dual users whose perception of how healthy um, tobacco uh, products were actually increased, which is quite important when you think we're seeing these things as a pathway to harm reduction. Um, I suspect we didn't see much movement on the uh, smokers, non-smokers and vapors because we it, there wasn't much place to go. We had a lot of floor effects, as you'd imagine. In terms of how socially acceptable, um, it seemed that uh, tobacco was seen as less socially uh, acceptable amongst non-smokers and vapors, uh, and vapors also saw, um, and smokers both saw 
uh, tobacco products as less desirable. So on the whole, a pretty comforting picture for the effect of those e-adverts uh, from a harm reduction perspective. So just to sum up, it seems that e-cigarettes, that first ones, do their job of increasing the desirability of e-cigarette projects. That's why the money is spent on marketing. But they also appear to make e-cigarettes appear more healthy. But we saw little effect on how socially acceptable they were. Um, we had little effects of uh, e-cigarette ads on um, tobacco products, which is uh, probably due to those floor effects. And finally, it seemed that um, there was a decreased desirability of tobacco products among smokers and vapors and around the social acceptability as well. So that was what we found with the e-cigarette adverts. We then did the same methodology, applying it to anti-smoking messages. And again, we got a decent sized sample, 990 people, ended up with 908 of them, and a good mix of smokers, vapors, non-smokers, and dual users. And we did exactly the same methodology. What did we find there? Interestingly, less differentiation between groups. So for e-cigarette um, attitudes, uh, people saw um, uh, e-cigarettes as being less healthy, less desirable, and less socially acceptable after seeing um, the uh, anti-smoking message. And tobacco products were seen as less healthy, less desirable, and, and uh, less socially acceptable over time after seeing that stop smoking message as well. And those changes in time were reasonably consistent between all the groups. So, um, I'm going to do about five minutes left. Three, okay. Um, so we'll whiz through our laboratory studies now. Um, there's a little bit less to talk about there. Um, so essentially what we did here was we brought it into the lab. We had a little bit more problems recruiting because people had to come in quite a lot. Um, so in our first study, we had uh, only 125 people. Uh, and we're really going to be focusing on the smokers and the non-smokers because of uh, how our cell sizes ended up. And essentially we got people in and we did some baseline measures. We took the demographics, their smoking history, things like that, uh, and their baseline attitudes. Two days later, they came back to the lab and they saw an advert. We took a second time measure and then they came back a week later to see whether or not any attitude changes had sustained. And we're really going to be focusing on the difference between that time, session one and session two. So what did we find? We took, some, we took an e-cigarette advert and I, I recognize this as an older generation advert. In one condition, they saw this and in the other condition, they found one which was more of a control, we attempted to generate more of a control condition. So we took the same advert, roughly the same text, but we swapped it from being around e-cigarettes to ele electronic toothbrushes. And the model we used to try and analyze this was what was the effect of seeing your control ad versus your actual ad on your time to um, attitudes towards tobacco controlling for time one. So it's essentially an attitude change, and we we're interested in the effect of the advert condition, initial baseline attitudes towards e-cigarettes, and also which group they're in. So what we found was, uh, if, if those of you listen to the technical, we use the, the process model in SPSS, and what we found was that seeing an ad, being a non-smoker, and having positive e-cigarette attitudes all had a direct main effect, essentially, on lower time two attitudes towards tobacco, controlling for time one. Essentially, those attitudes decreased over time. But we also found a three-way interaction between those different variables. And what that three-way interaction suggested to us was that a decrease in tobacco attitudes was shown um, only for smokers who had low initial baseline um, e-cigarette attitudes. And the confidence intervals do just tweak zero. Uh, it just about includes zero, but the p-value is around, I think it's bang on 0.005. So in, there's some evidence there. We did the same thing with anti-smoking messages, um, and you can see the samples there. And here what we did was we used a stop smoking advert uh, highlighting um, the, uh, um, the risks of uh, having to have amputations due to smoking related illnesses, uh, and then we edited that uh, to make it look more like uh, a Transport for London thing highlighting that if you're going to use public transport, you need to take it a bit longer. It hasn't, rend it hasn't rendered quite as nicely here, so I apologize, but it did look better when we used it. And what did we find this time? This is a really unfortunate thing. Uh, oh, I'll get to that in a sec. So we did a little slight tweak to the, um, the design. Because we had such problems with retention, our first study, we, we put the first and the second set of measures on the same uh, day. And then they came back a week later. Uh, and focusing on the difference between in session one between baseline and time two, um, we did the same thing. And unfortunately, we found no effects at all. So that was a little bit disappointing for us. But I think it's also important to report those null, null responses and null events, because otherwise um, you get into all sorts of problems further down the line. So pulling it all together, in terms of e-cigarette adverts, um, slightly reassuringly, perhaps, we didn't see, uh, we saw only very limited evidence that e-cigarette ads um, 
would promote positive attitudes towards um, e-cigarette, towards tobacco products, but the notable exception around that is around dual users. So we have to be quite careful about when we're thinking about regulation around e-cigarettes, if there's anything we can do around that. Uh, and uh, on the whole, though, we observe many more positive effects suggesting that e-cigarettes make tobacco products seem less desirable. So there's not this spillover effect that e-cigarette adverts make tobacco, adverts seem, uh, tobacco products seem better. In terms of anti-smoking messages, our pilot at least showed that anti-smoking messages decrease attitudes towards tobacco products, which is probably unsurprising. There's been an enormous amount of research optimizing those particular campaigns to make them work. But we found, and I think this is really the take-home message from my talk, we did see an unintended effect of decreasing the attractiveness of e-cigarettes um, for smokers and dual users, which is a bit of a problem. If you've got people and you want them to move on to e-cigarettes, but your anti-smoking or your uh, stop smoking promotional materials decrease the attractiveness of those, that's a real challenge and something I think we should be thinking about. But to note, we didn't replicate that in our less well-powered um, lab study. Uh, so just to thank, um, well, this is the research team, myself, in Aubrey, Paula Booth, and Sharon Cox. And I'd also like to thank Lancashire NHS Research Department, who helps us with the recruitment. Um, just in terms of my conflict of interest, the only one that I, well, the only one I have is I'm currently uh, the leading a randomized controlled trial comparing NHS stop smoking services with Alan Carr's Easy Way to Stop Smoking. Um, and that's funded by Alan Carr, but we're independent of that and we are contractually free to publish the results, which we're going to be doing in the next six months or so, so keep your eye out for that. Uh, and if you're interested in that, you can see the, the registration in the back of the brochure. I think that's me done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.